are you? I want to talk about uniform, uniform motion problems today. And we need to use the formula distance equals rate times time. It might not be in that form when we use it. We might end up using distance equals rate times time. But if you think about it, if you divide both sides by R here and here, you get D over R is equal to T. So we might be using time is equal to distance over rate. Or we could even manipulate and solve for rate if necessary. We'll just read these problems and see what we can set up and solve the problem. So it says Rich can ride his bike 30 miles into a 5 mile per hour headwind. Okay. In the same amount of time he can ride 54 miles with a 7 mile per hour tailwind. What is Rich's biking speed? If you'll notice you have two different scenarios that I'll highlight for you. He can ride 30 miles in a 5 mile per hour headwind and he can ride 54 miles with a 7 mile per hour headwind, tailwind. Okay. Now what's important here is the fact that this takes the same amount of time. So to start with, let's just set up our two different scenarios. Okay. So we know that Rich can ride a bike 30 miles in a 5 mile per hour headwind. So he can go 30 miles, that's a distance, 30 miles, okay, and the 5 mile per hour headwind is not how fast he rides the bike. We don't know how fast he rides the bike, but we know he's got a 5 mile per hour headwind. So how about this? We're going to call the rate R, we're just going to call it R, but the problem is he's being slowed down. Headwind slows you down, right? So I'm going to subtract 5 miles per hour. Because let's just say he can ride 20 miles per hour normally, but if he's riding into a headwind, that's going to slow him down, right? So it's going to be R minus 5. And the time, we actually don't know, but we do know it's the same as the other time. All right, so let's keep going. So for our, our other story, I'm going to use a different color here. Let's say, uh, notice it says he can ride 54 miles. So our distance is 54. Okay, our rate. Now, once again, we don't know how fast he can go, but we do know he's riding in a 7 mile per hour tailwind, so that's going to be R plus 7. And the time, well, it's the same as the other, right? Now, since the time is the same, here's what we want to do. We want to use this formula right here, that T is equal to distance over R. And since these are equal, we have this T equal to this T. So over here, we have D over R can be written as 30 over R minus 5. And that's equal to the D over R on this side. So that's going to be 54 over R plus 7. And if you'll notice, we have a proportion in this case. So I can multiply the 30 times the R plus 7. So I've got 30 times R plus 7 is equal to 54 times R minus 5. Now what I do there, I cross multiply. So 30 times R plus 7 is equal to 54 times R minus 5. Now I need to solve this equation. That's going to find the rate. So I distribute the 30 inside. So that gives me 30R plus 210 is equal to 54R minus... 270. All right, now I'm trying to solve for R. So I need our R's on the same side of the equation, and I need our constants on the same side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is get my R's on the left. So I'm going to subtract 54R and subtract 54R. Now what that's going to do is going to give me 30R minus 54R is negative 24R plus 210 is equal to negative 270. And I'm going to subtract 210 from both sides of the equation. Now I'm going to go to the top of the screen because I am out of space. So negative 24R is equal to 270 minus 210 is going to be a negative 480. And now I divide both sides by negative 24. And I get R is, and I do 480 
divided by 24 and I get a nice 20 miles per hour. Now that 20 miles per hour is Rich's rate without a headwind or out a tailwind. So when he biked the 30 miles with a 5 mile per hour headwind, he was actually traveling at 15 miles per hour. On the other hand, when he biked 54 miles with a 7 mile per hour headwind, he was traveling 27 miles per hour. So let's try another problem. Leslie can sail her boat 24 miles into a 4 mile per hour headwind in the same amount of time she can sail 54 miles with a 6 mile per hour headwind. So again, notice we have two different situations. She can sail, I'm going to highlight this for you, 24 miles in a 4 mile per hour headwind. That's one situation. The other situation is 54 miles with a 6 mile per hour tailwind. And what's crucial, super important about this problem, is it takes the same amount of time to do this. Okay, so again, we're going to set our times equal to each other. So what we know is that T is equal to T. And now since we know time is distance over rate, we can set up the distance over rate for our first situation, our yellow part, and then distance over rate for our blue part. Okay, so distance over rate for our yellow part Let's use some, some fancy colors here. Let's see if the yellow will show up. So our distance is 24 miles. And then our rate. Now this is where it gets sticky. Because we're riding with a headwind, it's going to slow us down. So we do our rate minus 4. Okay. Now on the other hand, if we're working with the other side, which is our blue story over here. Okay, we're going to go 54 miles, and our rate is with a tailwind, so we, we don't know how fast we're going, but we know we're going to go faster by 6 miles per hour, so I'm going to add 6 to that. Now, when I solve this problem, I'm using a proportion, so I multiply the numerator here times the denominator there. I need to make sure I use parentheses, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work over to the left here, 24 times r plus 6, and that's equal to, I'm going to multiply this numerator times this denominator and use parentheses, 54 times r minus 4. And then I use my distributive property, so 24 times r is 24r, plus, and then 24 times 6 gives me 144. On the other side, 54 times r is 54r, minus, because there's a minus, 54 times 4 results in 216. Now I'm trying to get my r's on the same side of the equation, so I'm just going to subtract 54r from the left and 54r from the right. 24 minus 54 gives me negative 30r plus 144 is equal to negative 216 trying to get this r by itself, so I'm going to subtract 144 from both sides of the equation. So it's going to give me 30r is equal to, now I'm adding two negative numbers together here, so 216 plus 144, but they're both negative, so it's going to be a negative 360, that my last step is to divide each by 30. So r is equal to 360 divided by 30 gives me 12. And if you'll notice, I lost a negative up here. Like this 30R should have been a negative 30, which made that a negative and that a negative and that a negative, which does give me a positive 12. And this would be in miles per hour. Okay, that's how fast Leslie can sail her boat without a headwind or a tailwind. So when she boats 24 miles into a headwind, it's actually 12 minus 4 is 8 miles per hour. On the other hand, when she sails 54 miles into a tailwind, she's going faster, so 12 plus 16, she'd be going 18 miles per hour. And it says, what is Leslie's speed without wind? And that's the one we circled, the 12 miles per hour. So get the idea, you've got two different scenarios, 
you have to figure out how they're related, and then you have to use the formula distance equals rate times time, or that formula manipulated in some way, like D, I mean T equals D over R, which is what we used the last two times. Talk about Dennis. Dennis went cross-country skiing for six hours on Saturday, so we know that's going to be important. Let's highlight that. He skied 20 miles uphill, so that's going to be important. And then another 20 miles back downhill. And so notice I'm doing these in different colors because uphill is going to be one situation and downhill is another situation. Okay. Returning to his starting point, his uphill speed was 5 miles per hour slower than his downhill speed. So going uphill, he was 5 miles per hour slower than downhill. And what was Dennis's speed going uphill and his speed going downhill? That's what we want to know at the end. So let's see if we can make heads or tails of this. Okay, things that I know is that it took 6 hours. Okay, it took 6 hours for what? Well, it turns out it took 6 hours for all of this. Not for just uphill, not for just downhill, but for all of it. So I want you to keep that in mind. But let's make a column for uphill. And let's make another column for downhill. And remember, things that we need to be thinking about are distance, rate, and time, and how they're related. Remember, you could use the formula distance equals rate times time. Now, for other problems, we manipulated that by dividing both sides by R, and that gave us time is equal to distance over rate. And that might be what we need in this problem, too. We'll find out. So uphill, what do we know about uphill? Well, we know he skied 20 miles uphill, so that's a distance. If we go on, then 20 miles by downhill. So downhill, the distance is also 20. It says his uphill speed was 5 miles per hour slower than his downhill speed. Okay, so his uphill speed is slower than downhill, but do we know either of those speeds? Well, we don't. We just know the uphill is slower than downhill. I don't know what downhill is, so let's call it R. So the rate for downhill, we're just going to call it R, which means the rate for uphill is going to be R minus 5, right? Because it's 5 miles per hour slower than downhill. Even though we don't know what the rate is, we know how the uphill relates to the downhill. Slower, okay? What about time? Do we know time? I know you're thinking, yeah, we do, because they told us it's 6 hours. But remember, it's 6 hours to do all of it. So how about this? If we add the time for uphill to the time for downhill, that answer is going to be 6. Now remember also that time, I've got your formula written right up here, is D over R. So we can say D over R for uphill plus D over R for downhill is equal to 6 hours, right? Now we know some of this stuff. We know D is 20. And we know R in this story for uphill is R minus 5 plus D for downhill is 20, and the R for downhill, we're just calling it R, and that equals 6. But here's what's important. We have an equation right here that has only one variable, R, in it. It doesn't have R's and T's and D's. It just has R, which means we can solve it. Now remember, the method to solve an equation like this, this is not a proportion, so we can't just multiply a numerator across the equal sign times the denominator and set that equal to numerator times denominator. It's not a proportion. So to solve a rational equation, remember the rule is, is to multiply by the least common denominator. So our least common denominator is r times r minus 5. So that's what I'm going to multiply times the 20 over r minus 5, times the 20 over r, and even times the 6. So here we go. I've got r, r times r minus 5 times 20 over r minus 5 plus r times r minus 5 times 20 over r. And that equals r times r minus 5 times 6. Okay, now watch this. The r minus 5s cancel out. And that gives me 20 times r. We'll write that down in a minute. Right here, the r's cancel out, and that gives me 20 times r minus 5. We'll write that down in a minute, too. On the right side, r times r minus 5 times 6, I can't do anything with that other than maybe rearrange it. So I've got 20r left 
plus 20 times r minus 5 equals, now I'm going to put the 6 in front, that'll make it easier to distribute. And I, next step, I just want to simplify this line, so 20 times r is 20r, 20 times negative 5 is minus 100, 6r, that'd be 6r squared, minus 30r. Now, what I notice next is I have a quadratic equation, so I must get this thing equal to zero. But before I do that, I need to add like terms. So I've got 40r minus 100 equals 6r squared minus 30r. Now I'm going to subtract 40r from both sides of my equation to get a zero, and I'm also going to have 100. And that's going to give me a zero on the left-hand side. So now I have 0 equals 6r squared minus 70r plus 100. Now I do notice there's a greatest common factor there of, is it just 2? So I pull out a 2 that gives me 3r squared minus 35r plus 50. And I'm trying to factor this, so I'm looking for numbers that multiply to be... 3 times 50, 150, and add to be negative 35. Now, in that case, I know they're both negative. Uh, things that multiply to be 150, I'm thinking like 10 times 15, and that's not going to work. Uh, what about 25? 25 times what would give me 150? That'd be 6, and 25 times 6 is 150, but that doesn't add to be negative 35. How about this? What about a negative 30 and a negative 5? That would definitely add to be negative 35. It multiplies to be a positive 150. That's our winner right there. So when we go to factor, this is a factor by grouping problem now, right? So the 2 stays in front. I rewrite this as 3r squared. Then I use my two values. It's going to be minus 30r minus 5r plus 50. Greatest common factor here and here. Don't forget, I still have a 2 in front. So here I'm pulling out a 3r, and that's going to leave me with r minus 10. Here I'm pulling out a minus 5, that's going to leave me with r minus 10. So this factors into 2 times r minus 10 times r, 3r minus 5. Okay, now I'm going to erase some stuff on the left over here so we have more space and you can see what in the world I'm doing. So I can get rid of our uphill and downhill story. I'm going to finish this up in a different color too, so you can clearly follow what I'm doing. So right now we have 2 times r minus 10 times 3r minus 5, and that's equal to 0. Now, you're supposed to set each factor separately equal to 0. I can't really set 2 equal to 0. Well, I can, but I don't get a result out of that because there's no variable involved. That's the no solution. r minus 10 equals to 0 gives me r is equal to 10, and 3r minus 5 is equal to 0. I add the 5 to get 3r equals 5, and I divide by 3 to get r equals 5 thirds. Okay. Um, All right, so there's actually two different results here. So we could be skiing at a rate of 10 miles per hour, or we could be skiing at a rate of 5 thirds miles per hour. Something wants me to say that that could not possibly be right. Um, is that a minus 5 that comes out? Well, it's right. Now, but we need to think about this, okay? So... We've got two answers here, a rate of 10 miles per hour and a rate of 5 thirds miles per hour. The 5 thirds seems a little fishy anyway, but here's what I want you to think about. His uphill speed was 5 miles per hour slower than his downhill speed, which means his uphill speed would be negative because if I subtract 5 from 5 thirds, I get a negative number. So this guy is out. So that means his uphill speed, remember they want to know both his uphill speed was 5 miles per hour slower than downhill. So his uphill is 5 miles per hour, where his downhill is the 10 
miles per hour. Because remember, R was just downhill, which is 10. Okay. So these could be a little bit tricky. All right. But just notice you set up everything you know. When you look at your answers at the end, remember what your answer is telling you. We had it set up over here earlier. I've erased it. But remember, we defined R was the downhill speed. So the R that we saw for the 10 is the downhill. Five thirds could be downhill too, but since uphill was five miles per hour slower than downhill, the five thirds is out because that means uphill he wasn't going up at all. <laughs> he was going backwards, which he we're we're not doing that. Okay, so again, uphill five miles per hour, downhill ten miles per hour. So Kendall drove three hours to her home, driving 165 miles on the interstate and 40 miles on country roads. So notice we have again two different scenarios. We have the interstate, and then we also have country roads. We have a total time over here that I'm going to do in a different color, three hours to drive home. All right, if she drove 25 miles per hour faster on the interstate than on the country roads, what was her rate on the country roads? So again, the yellow is what we call the interstate. So she drove 25 miles per hour faster on the interstate than on the country roads. Let's set up our two different scenarios. So we have the interstate situation. And we have country roads. I'm just going to call it roads situation. All right. Now we know it took her three hours to drive home, but that's a total. That's the interstate plus the country road. So this is going to work very similar to the last problem we did. Um, we drove 165 miles on the interstate. So D is 165 on the interstate and 40 miles on the road. So D is 40 on the country roads. She drove 25 miles per hour faster on the interstate. Now, she didn't drive 25 miles per hour on the interstate. She drove 25 miles per hour faster on the interstate. We don't know how fast she drove on the country roads, so we're going to just say R is R on the country roads, but on the interstate is going to be R plus 25 because it's faster than on the country roads. You with me? The time we don't know on the interstate and on the roads, but here's what we do know. We know if we add the two times together, it is equal to three hours, and that's what the green is all about. Now, we have a formula for time. Remember, it's distance over rate, so distance over rate for interstate plus distance over rate for the roads is equal to three hours. So what I want to do is I want to multiply all of these. Um, actually, I want to substitute first, don't I? I haven't done that. So D is 165 over uh, R plus 25. That's for the interstate. Plus for the roads, the D is 40. Over in the R on the roads, we just called it R is equal to 3. This is my equation that I need to solve. I know I can solve it because it's only in one variable. It's only the variable R. We're not, we're not looking for a T or a D. It's only R's. And the rule is always to multiply by the least common denominator when you're solving a rational equation. And that is R times R plus 25. So I'm going to multiply all of these fractions by R times R plus 25. So here I go. And that's going to be times the first fraction, which is 165 over R plus 25. Then I'm going to do it again after the plus, so R times R plus 25. And I'm going to multiply that times 40 over R. Put those in parentheses. And then on the other side, R times R plus 25. We're going to multiply that times 3. So what's going to happen is our denominators are going to cancel. That's the whole point of doing that. And on the other side of the equal sign, nothing cancels. So now I have 165R for my first term plus 40 times R plus 25 for my second term. And on the other side, I'm going to put a 3 in front, 3R times R plus 25 for my third term. So I have 165R plus distribute 40R plus 40 times 25 equals a thousand and I have 3r squared plus 3r times 25 is 75r. Now again anytime you have an r squared your goal is to get it equal to zero but I can add like terms here that's 205r 
plus 1,000 is equal to 3R squared plus 75R. Now, I like my R squared positive, so I'm going to subtract 205R from both sides of the equation. I'm also going to subtract 1,000 from both sides of the equation. That gives me an equation with a 0 on the left-hand side and 3R squared, and then 75 and 205. So it's a positive 75 minus 205 gives me negative 130R minus 1,000. Now my goal is to solve this equation. There's not a greatest common factor, so what I'm looking for are numbers that multiply to be 3,000 negative and add to be negative 130. Real quick, that looks like a negative 100 and I was about to say negative 100 and negative 30, they add to be negative 130, but you know what? They don't multiply to be negative 3,000. I'm on the wrong path here. I need a positive and a negative, so this is not going to work. Um, if, if you work on this a while, you could come up with negative 150 and a positive 20. Those do multiply to be negative 3,000 and add to be negative 130. So now I have 0 equals 3R squared. I'm rewriting my middle term with negative 150R plus 20R minus 1,000. I continue by factoring a greatest common factor of 3R out of here. That's going to leave me with um, R minus 50 plus 20. That's also going to leave me with R minus 50 because 20 times 50 is 1,000. I'm getting there. I have R minus 50 times 3R plus 20. I set each factor separately equal to 0. So R minus 50 equals 0 and 3R plus 20 equals to 0. Here I get R is 50. Here I subtract the 20, divide by 3, and I get R equals negative 20 over 3. Here's the problem. It's not the fraction. It's the fact that your rate can't be negative. We can't have a negative R at all. So our rate equals 50 is looking more like it. And remember, R represented the country roads. And that's what the question asked for. What was her rate on the country roads? She, she drove 50 miles per hour on the country road. Now, I could have easily said, what's her rate on the interstate? And then we would have had to take that 50 and plug it back in and add 25. And so she was going 75 miles per hour on the interstate and 50 miles per hour on the country roads, but it only asked for country roads. All right, Kayla rode her bike 60 miles home from college one weekend and then rode the bus back to college. So it took her three hours less to ride back to college on the bus than it took her to ride home on her bike. And the average speed on the bus was 45 miles per hour faster than Kayla's biking speed. So find Kayla's biking speed. Um, so, so let's break down what we have again. I know these are not easy problems. She rode 60 miles home from college one weekend and then rode the bus back. So if you'll notice, our distance is the same. We're riding home from college at 60 miles, riding the bus back at 60 miles. And we also have two things going on, right? So let's write down what we have going home. Going on, we have a bike and we have a bus. Okay. All right, so it took her three hours less to ride back to college on the bus than it took her to ride home on the bike. So the bus was faster by three hours. So we don't know how long it took her on the bike. We just know the bus was faster by three hours. So let's do this. Let's let T just be the time on the bike and T minus three be the time on the bus. That makes sense, right? Because it's three hours less she spent on the bus. Okay. If we keep going, the average speed of the bus was 45 miles per hour faster than Kayla's biking speed. Okay, so the bus goes faster, so the rate was 45 miles per hour faster than the rate on the bike. Once again, we don't know the rate on the bike. We just know the rate on the bus was 45 miles per hour faster. So I put R plus 45 for rate and R for rate on the bike. 
if we continue with what we know, then you know the distance is 60 on the bike and the distance is 60 for the bus. Okay. Now, if, if we think about this, you know, if you set up distance equals rate times time for each of those, this, this one's a little more tricky than the others, and I would have 60 is equal to R times T, because we don't know what R and T are. Okay. And here I have 60 is equal to R, which is R plus 45, and T, which is T minus 3. We've got to figure out how to get rid of a variable somehow. Okay. Now, the idea is we could go back to thinking that T, remember earlier our T's, we either added them together or we set them equal to each other. Well, in this case, the bus goes faster, so the time is three hours less on the bus. So what we could do is we could say if we take our bike distance, okay, which is our, our bike time, which is going to be, remember, time right here is equal to D over R. So if we take D over R, so 60 over R, and you could, you could look at here too if we saw for T, it would be 60 over R. And here, our D over R is 60 over R plus 45. Now, for these to be equal, we would have to add 3 to the bus time. You see what I mean? Because the bike, so, so if we set our times equal, I know the bus is 3 slower, but for these to be equal, I would have to add 3 over here to the bus so I could put it equal right here. Okay, so we're not substituting our rate is t minus 3. I'm trying to get these balanced and for my bike time to equal my bus time, I'd have to add 3 hours to the bus time to get them to balance. And this is the best and easiest way to solve this problem. I know it seems crazy, but it really is. So now I am multiply by my least common denominator, remember? So to save space, I'm going to do that right on top of my problem. So I'm going to multiply this side of the equation by R times R plus 45. I'm going to multiply this times R times R plus 45. And then multiply 3 times R times R plus 45. Okay. Now here on my first on the left hand side, the R's cancel. That was the point. Now I'm left with 60 times R plus 45 equals, now over here, the R plus 45's cancel, and I'm left with 60R. And here, nothing cancels, so I'm left with 3R times R plus 45. I'm going to distribute that 60R plus 60 times 45. Gives me 2,700. On the other side, I have 60R plus 3R squared plus, and then 3R times 45 is going to give me 135R. Now, I need to get this equal to zero again because I have an R squared. So if I subtract 60R on both sides, that actually cancels. And so I have zero equals 3R squared plus 135R minus 2,700. And I need to factor, so I have zero equals. Now, can I factor this? I'm trying to find numbers that multiply to be 3 times 2,700 and add to be 135. Can we do that? So 2,700 times 3, so add, multiply to be... 8,100 and add to be 135. So we'll have to play around with that for a minute. Oh, Y'all, yeah, I played with this for a little while. It took me a while, but we've got 45, and that's supposed to be a negative 8,100. And 8,100 divided by 45 gives me 180. 
And if I make the 45 negative and the 180 positive, that does add to be 135. That was kind of brutal. So we got 3R squared minus 45R plus 180R minus 2,700 right there. Now, greatest common factor, greatest common factor, right? So 0 equals 3R comes out. That leaves R minus 15 plus, and then we're going to pull out 180 and 2700 divided by 180 gives me 15, so that's going to be R minus 15. And now I have 0 equals R minus 15, which is the factor that matches, times 3R plus 180. Okay, now R minus 15. By the way, I could have factored a 3 out of this, and I didn't catch it until now. But R minus 15 equals 0. That gives me R is equal to 15. 3R minus 8, 1, 8. 3R plus 180 equal to 0. Gives me 3R is equal to negative 180, which R is negative 60. Now, again, our rate can't be negative. We're not going to go negative 60 miles per hour. So R equals 15 is our rate and they wanted Kayla's biking speed and notice that is what R is so she biked at 15 miles per hour for our last problem we like to talk about Victoria jogging 10 miles to the park along a hilly trail so on our way out she drives she runs 10 miles on a hilly trail and then returns by jogging 15 miles on a flat trail so we have two situations. We have a hilly trail and we have a flat trail. She jogs one mile per hour faster on the flat trail than she does on the hilly trail. Okay, so on the hilly trail, we don't know how fast she goes. We're just going to call it rate or R. And on the flat trail, we know it's R plus one. And her return trip takes her half an hour longer. We'll deal with that in just a minute. Okay. What else do we know? We know the distance on the hilly trail is 10, whereas the distance on the flat trail is 15 miles. You notice every problem we have done, we have solved for T and we've worked with T. So we know that T is equal to D over R and T is equal to D over R. Now, we don't have a total time, like we don't know how long it took her to run the whole day, and we also know the times are not equal because it says that her return trip, remember her return trip is on the flat trail, took half an hour longer. Okay, so the flat trail took longer than the hilly trail. Now, to make these times equal, I wouldn't add half an hour to the flat trail. I would have to add half an hour to the hilly trail. Again, since the flat trail took longer because her return trip took longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my D over R and I'm going to add half a mile to it so it's equal to D over R on the flat trail. So I have T10 over R plus 0 0.5 is equal to... And on this side, I'm going to have 15 over R plus 1. Okay? All right, so I need to solve this equation. And to solve this equation, I need to multiply by my common denominator. And to save space, I'm going to write that right on top of here. My common denominator is R times R plus 1. So I need to multiply this fraction times R times R plus 1. This fraction times R times R plus 1. And this fraction times R times R plus 1. And what's going to happen is my R's cancel in the first fraction, and that leaves me with 10 times R plus 1. Nothing cancels in the second fraction, so that's 0 0.5 times R times R plus 1. And in the third fraction, the R plus 1's cancel, and that leaves me with 15R. All right, now we need to use the distributive property. So I have 10R plus 10 plus 0.5R squared plus 0.5R is equal to 15R. 
I add like terms. I have 10R plus 0.5R. And that's going to give me 0.5R squared plus 10.5R plus 10 is equal to 15R. My thing is I need this equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 15R from both sides of this equation. So 0.5R squared plus, and then 10.5 minus 15. gives me negative 4.5R plus 10 equals 0. Now my problem is I need to factor this. We don't know anything about factoring with decimals. So I'm going to do a neat trick here. I'm going to multiply every bit of this by 2. And that's going to eliminate that decimal. So 2 times 0 0.5 is R squared. 2 times negative 4.5 will be minus 9R. And 2 times 10 will be plus 20 equals 0. Now maybe I have something that I can factor. I'm looking for numbers that multiply to be positive 20 and add to be negative 9. Multiply to be positive 20 and add to be negative 9. How about minus 4 and minus 5? So r minus 4 times r minus 5 is equal to 0. So I have my rate is equal to 4 and my rate is equal to 5. Now we know that both of these scenarios can't be right. Okay, so we need to think about which one is which. Our r represented the hilly. Okay, and typically when you get two answers, one of the answers is not valid. We've got a rate of 4 miles per hour and a rate of 5 miles per hour. Now both of those represent the hilly trail. So she could have gone 4 miles per hour on the hilly trail and then 5 miles per hour on the flat trail. Or she could have gone 5 miles per hour on the hilly trail and 6 miles per hour on the flat trail. And it still looks like it would meet the conditions because we didn't have a total amount of time. We just knew that she finished the flat trail um, in half an hour longer than it took her to do the hilly trail. And both of these scenarios would meet that condition. So we actually got two valid answers. So two different situations where this could have happened. Hope this helps. Um, let me know if you have questions.